a deck that used to terrorize Pioneer but was seemingly forgotten for a while, ended up clawing its way back into the conversation at Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor, as the archetype as a whole was 10th in win rate out of all the decks present in the room at the Pioneer portion of the Pro Tour. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Let's check out Abs and Grease Fan. The deck archetype had four copies of the Pro Tour, which were 16, 14, and 0 in matches overall for a 53.3% win rate. Now, for comparison, that's the same win rate that Boris Heroic had at the Pro Tour, although there were obviously more copies of Boris Heroic in the room than Abs and Grease Fang. And now, some versions of the deck stuck to the kind of tried and true older list that we were kind of used to seeing previously, but there was two cards in the top placing deck in particular that I wanted to point out and really talk about being changes for the Abs and Grease Fang list. But before we get there, let's review the deck as a whole, just in case you're not up to date on what it's trying to do. Now at its core, Abzan Grease Fang is a combo first, mid-range second type of deck. In a vein, you catch my drift, you can think of it like the Rakdos Vampires list, only a bit more fragile. The combo part of the deck revolves around putting Grease Fang, Okiba Boss into play and getting one of the deck's three different vehicles from the graveyard into play ahead of schedule. Now, preferably this one. Parhelion 2. By returning a vehicle this way, Grease Fang gives it haste, allowing for you to swing for 13 damage in the air with the angels that Parhelion 2 creates. Even though Grease Fang says that the vehicle must return to your hand at the end of turn, the angels do stay behind for at least 8 more damage in the air, dealing enough for lethal damage on turn 4. Now the way we want to achieve this combo is by putting a vehicle in the graveyard as soon as possible, mainly via Grizzly Salvage. The 2 mana Golgari Instant digs 5 cards deep and allows us to either find a Grease Fang or a 3rd land and put it into our hand, while the rest, hopefully including a vehicle, get put into our graveyard. Instant Speed means we can do this at the end of our opponent's turn, untap, and then combo on turn 3. The deck does have other ways to put cards in the graveyard, such as Rafine's Informant, which allows us to connive, placing a card from our hand into the graveyard. Its potential 3 power means that it can crew a Sky Sovereign all on its own to boot. Bitter Triumph was a card added from LCI as a way to deal with opposing blockers and planeswalkers, which conveniently lets us discard a card to reanimate with Grease Fang. Asika's Chariot is the third and final vehicle, which makes Green Splash the most worthwhile combination with Grease Fang's Orzhov mana cost. Completely blocking up the ground with cats, the ability to loop two of them with Grease Fang is a powerful way to overwhelm opponents in a grindy mid-range game. The rest of the main deck is ways to protect the combo, such as Thought Season Duress, as well as Traverse the Uvenwald, which will have Delirium most of the time with just a single Grizzly Salvage Dump. But we're here to go over two new additions to the deck, and those are Sentinel of the Nameless City and Kaya Spirit Justice. Sentinel is a 3-4 body with Vigilance that plays a strong mid-range game, but more importantly, it makes maps when it enters and when it attacks. Not only does exploring help put cards in our graveyard while growing things large enough to threaten big damage or crew our vehicles alone, but it also synergizes with Kaya's Static Planeswalker ability. The ability on Kaya says that if any creature you control or is in your graveyard to be exiled, choose one and make target token you control a copy of it. That means those maps, they can become Grease Fangs to still put vehicles into play. How do we make sure something gets exiled? Just use Kaya's plus two. It even helps us find a vehicle if we don't have one thanks to surveil. It also allows us to make tokens or exile a big creature threat from our opponent if we trade one of our creatures for it, which then can be copied. Overall, Kaya seems like a huge upgrade to the deck. Even if you only wind up running one or two copies, and it's great against Exile and Removal, like March of Otherworldly Light. However, it won't trigger off of cards like No More Lies, unfortunately, because the creature has to either be in play or in the graveyard, not on the stack. Mono curve of the deck going higher, it means that Temporary Lockdown becomes a viable sideboard card to fight the aggro decks that can sometimes deal with your combo by being just as fast, if not faster. The only card that Temporary Lockdown hits on the Grease Fang side? Rafine's Informant and the tokens that aren't copies of creatures yet. We also get access to Fatal Push and Abrupt Decay, the latter of which also deals with Rest in Peace, which messes up our combo pretty significantly. Since our main deck is more mid-rangey now, our sideboard plan has pieces to secure our combo plays, such as Deafening Silence and just regular Silence, to stop interaction from our opponents. 
Duress and Reckoner Bankbuster come in for longer games like against Control, and then Aklazot Deepest Betrayal is a hard to remove threat that can steal games when your opponent is using removal on your combo pieces instead. Cutzil's Flanker is mainly there to hate on opposing graveyards, but it does have three modes in case it can be used for some other purpose, such as a board wipe after losing a lot of tokens removed, and then it comes into play with a bunch of counters on it. Overall, the breath feels like it has gotten a breath of fresh air, and it really straddles that line between combo deck and mid-range deck the best it's done since it first became a deck with Grease Fang's release in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. However, the deck sometimes does feel like it has that Abzan junk clunk because it doesn't have any pure card draw or real card advantage, so there's no way to really power through some of your dead draws and some of your poor top decks. But don't just take my word for it, let me know what you think the tweaks in the deck have done to it in the comments below and if you're excited to sleeve up some vehicles again. As always, make sure to tap that subscribe button for more breakdowns, deck techs, and general magic content. See you later.